Hey, what is up? It is Ash. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if this is your first time here. I'm sorry I've been MIA for like three months, I think. Been super busy focusing on my strength training journey, working my job, working on my overall like mental health and spiritual health. Very sorry about that. I do want to get in the habit of making more content more consistently. I am getting back on track on really working on that bucket list, living in the moment and not like like putting things off for the future because the future is never guaranteed. Today's video is a more serious note. I just was working out tonight, felt like somebody needed to hear my story and needed to be encouraged and um, I know how transparent I am can make people feel really uncomfortable. Um, you know, I'm for some people, I'm not for everyone. But for the people that I am for, they mean a lot to me, so this video is for you. If this makes anybody else feel uncomfortable, I'm very sorry, you can click off this video. The main reason why I felt this sense of urgency to talk about this is because around this time last year, I think, maybe a little bit later, I received a text message that was a suicide note from someone very dear to me and I was actually sleeping and woke up 40 minutes after it had been sent and I immediately called this person and they didn't answer their phone so I called the cops and um, told them everything that was going on and read them the text message and this person is someone that I thought would have never ever done this in a million years which is one of the reasons why I am so transparent is because you never know who is going through something like this, who is thinking about and they're ending their life or dealing with thoughts of self-harm and the temptation of those things. Like you really never know. Like people can have it all together on the outside, but you have no idea what they're going through. So to me, being like a really open person is really important because it could be that one moment where you are really open and honest that helps somebody and prevents somebody from, you know, doing something like that. And um, this year, there were, oh, on the first story, the person made it. Um, the doctors didn't think that this person was going to make it, but God pulled this person through and they lived through it and they learned a valuable lesson through it so yeah that's all good um but this year i had two other people pretty close to me were also dealing with the same thing and it's been kind of recent and i was just working out tonight and i just kind of stopped thinking about it and thinking about like who else could be dealing with this and as somebody who has dealt with this, I just want to share my story in hopes that it will help someone making everything that I have been through completely worth it. And if you are familiar with my channel, you know that that is like my slogan. That is like my way of life is living a life poured out in hopes that I can help at least one person because if I can help one person, then that makes everything that I've been through completely worth it. So without all the rambling, let's go ahead and get into um, what happened. So I don't want to throw any names out there and be very specific on what happened to me. As a very young child, I went through quite a few different forms of abuse and let's just say like there was a lot of things that happened to me for many many years that I feel like shouldn't happen to anybody and I felt very trapped and I didn't have a relationship with God I didn't really know God and so I tried to take things in my own hands and I didn't really know how to navigate through everything that I went through and so my way of navigating was pretty much like self-destructing. So we'll go with like the things that I started doing. Um, at the age of 12, I started getting high every weekend and started drinking every weekend as well. That was like my first outlet to just 
let go of all the things that had been building up. So after doing that for like two years, oh yeah, and then I was, I was 10 years old. Yeah, I know, 10 years old. Like I'm not even joking or exaggerating. When I started smoking cigarettes, my mom, I'm sorry, God forgive me. But my mom uh, used to buy cigarettes by the carton and I used to steal like packs of cigarettes or find people that I knew that were like old enough to buy cigarettes and give them to me. I know who would give a 10 year old cigarettes, but you'd be surprised. And so those were some outlets that I used to go to uh, that, at that age. And so we'll fast forward to when I was 14 years old. And that was the first time that I attempted to take my own life. I had overheard an adult talking about cutting and talking about the proper way to cut in order to end your life. Why this person had that conversation in front of, I think at the time I was like 10 years old, I have no idea, but I remembered it. All of the instructions that were in my memory, even though it did not kill me, it opened up a door to a very unhealthy additional coping skill, which was cutting. The best way that I can explain cutting to people they don't want, don't understand is, one, it does release endorphins, like a lot of endorphins and dopamine. It releases more than like crack cocaine. So yes, it hurts, but at the same time, it feels good. And I know that sounds really weird. I added that to my coping skills, so I was, drinking, smoking, smoking weed, uh, cutting for like quite a while until I was, I think like 16 years old, I ended up moving to live with my dad. The moment that I did that, I had actually came out about all the things that had happened to me, all the things that I was suppressing, like it was kind of like an accident just like unraveled and everything came out like word vomit at a women's clinic. That made everything kind of better but worse. I started getting help at that point, but it was like having to deal with everything that I had been suppressing and denying for such a long time. Brings us to the most serious suicide attempt that I ever had, which was when I was 16. I had fractured my ankle in football, like in school, like during gym class or whatever, we were playing Hawaiian football. Grass was frozen and, and I ended up slipping and fracturing my ankle like in three different places. So they had given me Vicodin and the Vicodin was making me nauseous. So they ended up switching my prescription over to Darvaset and they ended up giving me a whole entire brand new bottle of Darvaset. So I had about 30 pills of Darvaset. And what that is, it's like the highest amount of Tylenol 3 and I'm pretty sure they took it off the market and they don't make it anymore. It's really, really bad for your liver. Something had happened and I just felt like everything was my fault. Like everything that I had ever been through was all of my fault. And I just took the whole entire uh, bottle, I had already taken like a few out of there, so I'm gonna guess and say that there was like 28 or 27 pills, Darvis sets, and I took them all at once, like, processing everything that happened, and I was crying, and I was just like a hot mess, and then I ended up like getting in my pajamas and li lying down in bed, and I was, as I was lying there, like I was still crying and I was just like thinking to myself, like I just can't keep doing this. I can't keep waking up every day and just living my life. Like I can't carry this stuff anymore. And um, the drugs, the effect of the drugs started to kick in. And I started freaking out cause I thought that I was dying, like it, felt like I was leaving my body. I started losing the sensation um, of my body and it started at my toes and it was like slowly crawling up from my toes to my ankles, to my calves, to my knees, to my thighs. And the more it, this like weird sensation started crawling up my body, like I literally just thought that I was leaving my body, that this was it, that I was about to die. and. I was terrified 
and I was just like, oh my gosh, like what did I just do? Did I make a mistake? And even though like I believed in God, but I wasn't like, didn't really have any faith at that point, I, I kind of got scared that if I died that I was gonna go to hell. So I had my first legit conversation with God. And when I say God, I mean Jesus. And I, um, I was just crying. It wasn't like anything like super like professional or like elegant or anything like that. I was just honestly talking to him like I would talk to any normal person. And to be honest, I still talk to God like that. But anyways, I was just like, God, like I'm really sorry for for what I just did. I just can't handle what I'm going through. I can't live this life anymore. And um, I asked him to forgive me. And I think that's pretty much it. Like it was just a simple prayer. And then but right after that prayer, that, um, that sensation where I felt like I was losing the feeling in my body and it was like crawling up my body, it stopped at my waist and then um, the feeling returned in my body but I was still like high out of my mind and um, people started blowing up my phone. I kept on getting like all these phone calls and like not gonna lie like it feels kind of pathetic thinking of it but like I told a couple of the people that had called me like what I had just done because I don't know like I was high and I was in shock that I just did what I did and I could not fall asleep because of the people that kept on calling my phone I think there was like three or four people that called my phone and I know the two of them I talked to for like at least an hour and I had to get up like really really early for school I think like four or five o'clock in the morning just because of the bus route and the time that my school started. So I got up and did my best to get ready for school and still higher than a kite. And um, I went to school that day and came home. And that night after coming home, I ended up telling my dad what had happened just because I was in shock. I couldn't believe that I actually like went through with it to that level and I was scared and I didn't know what to do. And the following day, my dad picked me up from school early and took me to my psychiatrist and he admitted me to a behavior medical center in Loma Linda, California, because um, we lived in California at that time. And um, when I was in there, they did a bunch of blood work and stuff like that. And they said, you know, like there's no point of like pumping my stomach because it's already gone through my digestive system at that point. But they said that just because I was alive at the moment and that I seemed okay at the moment did not mean that I would be okay by the end of the week. I consumed the worst possible thing for my liver and a lot of it and at the time like I was 16 and I was just thinking like oh you know whatever like you're just trying to scare me so I, I don't do it again but like as an adult I have been on some medications for um for seizures some of them they've actually had to take me off of because my liver panel came back like abnormal or something like that and uh I had done some research on that just to, you know, I don't know, get more understanding. Up to six months after stopping taking the medication, you can still end up in liver failure if you were showing signs of, you know, any kind of liver problems. So what the doctor actually said when I was 16 was very, very true. That was pretty scary. And I have known so many people that have attempted suicide and unfortunately, I've heard many stories of people who are successful at attempting suicide. And I don't know why I made it through mine. Um, 
the only thing that really stands out to me is, you know, obviously like calling on God and like repentance and realizing like this isn't a good thing. Like I'm committing murder against myself. Here I am and I'm very thankful to be alive. After that time, I did try like think one or two more times and I still kind of dealt with cutting and I finally hit rock bottom when I was 17 years old and I got sent back to my mom because I got sent back to my mom I was closer to some of the people that did the most damage in my life and kind of like put me in the state of mind that I was like I'm not 100% blaming them like I forgive these people but like it, what they did to me was too much for my little brain to handle. That caused me to hit rock bottom. And the one thing, you know, I had tried all these different antidepressants and mood stabilizers and doctors and coping mechanisms and cutting and smoking and drinking and just like all of these things, chasing every high that I could possibly get my hands on. And the one thing that I didn't really take serious with God so I decided that I wanted to get baptized and I ended up getting baptized and in before the baptism I was just like thinking like I want a fresh start and I did not know anything about the Bible and I just kept on saying like I want a fresh start I just want to start all over from scratch and try to live my life right or whatever and um, Little did I know that there's actually a scripture in the Bible, uh, in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 38, that talks about how for how baptism is for the remission of sins. Um, so it's, to me, it's kind of funny that, like, I said I wanted to just start over because, you know, your sins being remitted is, like, the same thing as starting over. So I just think that that was really cool. After I got baptized... I got upset about something and that was the moment that I realized like that something drastically changed in my life because I was only upset for like literally like maybe 15 minutes and then I just had peace and I remember being like whoa like is this real because before I would just go in a downward spiral and I would just dwell on everything that hurt and I wouldn't be able to like get my head above the water. The more the life things ended up happening, the more I realized like, oh my gosh, this is here to stay. Like, this is awesome. And I kind of ended up just kind of like walking away from God and was kind of like, thanks for the healing. Peace out. I went back to partying until I was 20 years old. At another rock bottom, I was in a relationship with somebody that I should not have been in a relationship with. And I will just spare you all of the details, but this person like traumatized me so bad that I was scared for my life, my mental health and everything. And, um, and I was just like really, really scared. I did not want to go back to my old life. I did not want to go back to the cutting, to the suicidal thoughts or the suicide attempts. And I had to like have a serious like moment of reflection and be like, okay, I have to do something that I have never done before. And I remember just the simple thought that maybe if I live my life for God, like completely like live my life for God, that I would be okay. And I had remembered a girl from my work. Um, she was one of my customers, one of my clients. I was a fitness consultant at the time. I remember her inviting me to church. And so I just decided, why not? Like, what do I have to lose at this point? And I ended up going and um, that very first service, I had never been to a service like this in my life. Like 
the music was great and stuff like that. The preaching was like a little weird. There was like a missionary in town and they turned off all the lights and gave people flashlights. But like that wasn't the part that touched me the most. It was after the preaching, there was this pastor that got up on the stage and he was talking about how he used to live in the parking lot of that church in a car and how kind the church was to let him live in their parking lot and he was a crackhead and he used to be a manager at some fast food restaurant and he would spend all of his money on crack and and now he was like standing up there as a pastor and I was just like oh my gosh like I finally found what I'm looking for like I finally found the place I'm like if this crackhead can become a pastor then surely I can make it in life and I can be a good thing I used to think for the longest time that I could not get on track or that I couldn't be like a good girl because all I knew was like a party lifestyle and just doing everything the wrong way I literally used to laugh at people that would try to do the right thing which looking back on that that's so weird and stupid doing the right thing is hard doing whatever you want to is easy so um that honestly is the biggest thing that changed my life was just fully submitting my life to god and that testimony that person's story like forever changed my life and helped me to know that i was in the right place because that's exactly what I was looking for and like I got the chance to be in like the actual presence of God and I feel like that sentence right there is like trying to explain what an elephant looks like to somebody that was born blind. I can't explain it to you and you comprehend what I'm talking about. It's something that you have to experience for yourself. So if you're watching this video, like I don't care, you don't have to leave a comment, you don't have to put yourself out there. But if you have never tried it out, if you have never tried out Jesus, like getting to know who he really is, you have nothing to lose and everything to gain and I hope that this story that my story has helped at least someone and made you curious and I've heard so many testimonies so many people's stories like this that they did not believe in God that they were agnostic or that they were like into witchcraft or they were Muslim or um, that they were Hindu or you know any of these like other religions um, they asked God, referring to Jesus, if you are real, show me who you are. Like, show me that you're real. And I've heard, like, the most amazing stories of the way that God just shows up on the scene and reveals his identity to people. So, if you want some kind of change in your life and you're tired of dealing with what you're dealing with, I challenge you to ask God who he is and let him reveal himself to you. I've tried everything in the past to be a better person and to just feel better and everything and Jesus is the only thing that ever worked for me. And I also just wanted to put this out there that I know that this is such a like taboo topic like self-harm and suicide but I just want to let you know that you are not stupid for attempting something or for having these thoughts or for feeling this away and this can literally happen to anybody and I know it's like a very shameful thing to go through but it's not your fault and you have so much more value than you could ever comprehend. And that is another thing that God can show you. When you ask him 
who he is, he will also show you who you are. If you feel like this video could help somebody else, please feel free to share this video. I really want to help at least one person and I felt such a, such a sense of urgency to do this video. So yeah, hope it helped. I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.